Welcome to Special Needs Palace, Faith and Action. For without action, then our faith is dead. My name is Eva Alphonse, a profession in special needs and early childhood development. In this channel, we're creating a society that is informed, inclusive, and updated on matters concerning special needs and disabilities. Not to miss on that, click on the subscribe button and the notification bell for you to be notified anytime a new video is out. And on today's video, we're going to talk about autism, one of the developmental disorders. Stay tuned and watch the video up to the end. So autism is a developmental disorder that affects one's ability to interact, behave, and even communicate. So in the like in interaction, you find that this individual does not interact with others at all sometimes, or the level of interaction is quite minimum, very, very minimum. Most of their time, they will spend the time just on their own, having their own company because they do not know really how to communicate or how they should receive other people's feelings and thoughts. So for them, interaction is not really something that they are into. They prefer their own space, having their own time and doing their own things on their own without interacting with others. And also on communication, you find that both speech and the nonverbal cues are affected. For example, when you ask them a question, let's say WH questions, that what is this? For example, it is a pencil and you're expecting them to answer pencil. They might, they might be knowing what it is, but they might not be able to answer or say the word pencil but when you give them the pencil they'll be able to take the pencil and maybe request for a paper or take a paper from whichever place they know that they can find a paper and start scribbling so that means that they know what it is but they cannot say the word pencil so their speech communication is affected and on nonverbal cues for example when a child is doing wrong and sometimes you just want to give him that I that you are doing wrong. But in this case, the, you find that your eyes will, won't have any effect on them. They'll just snub the eye off or they might not get the message that you're trying to pass across. So their nonverbal cues are affected and unless you train them to acquire the skills of nonverbal cues, they might not be able to know what you literally mean so they have to be assisted either by a speech therapist or another specialist who can help them develop their language and even their communication skills in general and one thing that also contributes to problems in communication with these individuals is because they have trouble in understanding other people's thoughts and also other people's feelings so if I do not understand you, it will be difficult for me to express myself. I don't know if you are happy and I don't know if you are sad. So how will I express myself if I cannot understand you? And this is what leads to lack of communication because they do not know how you will take in the information that they are about to give or the expression that are, they are about to express from themselves. So you find that this leads to troubles in expressing themselves and also communication because they do not understand their environment in general and they do not understand what is going on with the people around them. And on behavior. These are individuals who show repetitive behaviors and tend to stick to routine for as long as they can, even if it will be throughout their lifetime. For example, if this child is going to school or this individual is school going, you find that where they'll sit for the first day in the school, it is where they'll sit for the rest of the year until when they'll move to the next 
class even if it's let's say the dining area where they sit the first time is where they'll stick to until maybe when that dining area will be changed so they tend to stick to their routine even if it is daily routine if it is waking up having breakfast going outside to play so and when it reaches that particular time for going out to play even if it is 10 or 5 every day at 10 or 5 they'll be going out to play so they stick to routine and know the exact time that they do something so every autism case is very different from another you cannot compare two individuals with autism and uh, come out with conclusions that they have uh, certain similarity because autism ranges from mild to severe and whatever symptoms that one may might exhibit the other one might not show the similar characteristics or rather symptoms so just to wind up is that autism cases are very different and one individual with autism cannot be compared to the other this is because autism ranges from mild to severe and whatever method of intervention that may work for another may not work for the other although you can always give it a trial and give it an experiment that's all for this video we're just doing a definition of what autism is I hope to see in the next video where we'll be looking into details the signs and symptoms or rather the red lights that can show you your child might developing autism and even the age that these autism starts to show. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you next time. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you've not. And for those who have subscribed, thank you so much for, watch, for watching and keeping it here.